Your confidence, where does this come from? My confidence comes from my pussy, bro. <laughs> pussy power. Pussy is power. I'm a feminist. I believe in the divine feminine. I believe that ever since I was a little girl, I would surround myself with powerful women. My mother and my sister, the cornrow clique were all women. I grew up in circles of women. Shout out Peaches and Jolene. I always had really strong women around me. Shout out the challenge, shout out girl party. And I feel so confident and so special and so sexy when I'm with women, more so than any other person. I've had men fa make me feel beautiful by the words that they say and the way that they touch me. But that don't fucking matter at the end of the day. There's nothing that beats the feeling of being in a group of women who all respect and love each other and lift each other up with their words. That is where my confidence comes from. I tour sometimes way too much <laughs> on a tour bus with five women and we're always just complimenting each other, hanging with each other, eating with each other, hating each other sometimes, fighting with each other, but crying with each other and tearing down all of the struggles that we have to deal with since we were born and understanding each other. I think that you have to dial into that. I'm so proud to be a woman. I'm so excited to live the rest of my life as a woman and be a badass bitch. I'm so happy to be at this point where I'm confident and I got titties, nigga. I'm really feeling popping and you should feel popping too. Whoever's watching this, if you're watching this and you're like, damn, I'm having a bad day, bitch, Look in the mirror and feel yourself. And you're like, bitch, I'm popping. Can't nobody tell me shit. And that is where my confidence comes from. And it took a long time to get there. But I'm so glad that I decided to embrace other women instead of be defensive and afraid of them. We are the most special beings in the universe. And you have to embrace them. Embrace your mother, your sister, your best friends. All these, the women at the stove, the women at the bodega. And she sells you that sandwich, look at her and be like, you're my sister. Because <laughs> that's where you're going to find your strength from, nowhere else. Men will give you a temporary strength, but they just here to break you down, girl. Get what you need to get from them and keep it moving. <laughs> so, you haven't so you haven't exactly always been like this. It took no. time to get to this point. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I was nerdy and I was extremely insecure. And I got teased a lot. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I did. I got teased a lot in middle school. I was very nerdy. It's just I like to read and I liked anime and she knows. <laughs> I like Sailor Moon and I like read Lord of the Rings and I was just a little different. And I feel like you know, I was very fortunate to find friends. I was in band. I played the flute. Mm. And... You know, the flute saved me, but also just made me like a black weirdo. <laughs> and growing up in Houston, that's not common. And it was a lot of Asian girls playing flute, a lot of white girls playing flute, but not a lot of black girls that look like this playing flute. So, yeah. Um, I will say to that, though, that only makes you stronger. It really depends on how you deal with it. Like... I dealt with it in a very disassociative way. I didn't like go, oh my God, I am this thing. I am a nerd. I am a hippie. I am a loser. I'm a weirdo. Like, I'm not going to let these words like dictate my future. How am I going to let somebody else's words? Once I walked home, because I was so mad, I was wearing bell bottoms. Mm. And this girl called me a hippie. Back then, I was, like, really mean. Now everyone's, like, black hippie. <laughs> but, like, not back then, nigga, not in Houston. I walked home because I was so hurt that somebody would not see me as one of them, see me as someone different. And I remember being so sad. And I didn't know now when I knew then that, like, being yourself really pays off. But it does. Being yourself pays off so much. You have to remember that... Being yourself isn't always the most popular thing. Being yourself isn't always the most beautiful thing sometimes to a lot of other people. But being yourself is always going to be true. And the truth is what sets you free. So I feel so free now because I never changed who I was. I still love anime. I still love Sailor Moon. Shout out Sailor Saturn, my nigga. I still talk like a white girl. And I'm still a black weirdo. And I'm going to keep making music and doing what feels good to me because... That is the point of this life. You're not living your life for nobody fucking else but you, bitch. So do it, bitch, because these niggas don't even matter. We're going to live and die. So who you going to live your life for?
them or yourself. Now, when you say <laughs> when you say teasing, did teasing ever lead lead to bullying, or it was just teasing and joking here and there? Um, the worst thing I can ever think of is once my gym clothes my gym clothes would get stolen sometimes, and I would be like, "Why? Where are my gym clothes?" <laughs> they would take them, so I would be like. It was weird. Like, I would go to gym, and then my clothes would be taken, and I would be, like, stuck in the gym clothes. Ouch. Yeah. And then, like, there was this one dude, literally, from fifth grade to high school, who would call me fat ass every day on the bus. Avery. Avery! He called me fat ass every day on the bus. This nigga, I would get on the bus, he'd be like, who's a fat ass? And I'd be like, wow, cool. Call me fat ass every day on the bus. And then one day, I was like, "Uh uh-huh. My ass is fat. What's good? Like, in my mind, it clicked. I was like... Cool. Like you can call me this, but why are you calling me this? Like what's your what's your end goal here? And of course he doesn't, you know, he didn't mean any ill will by it and he's probably not going to be like, "Oh my god." Like now like he's going to be not even apologetic but just like, "Okay." But for me, like that was hurtful from 5th grade to mm. high school, the most popular guy in school, basketball player, is calling me fat ass on the bus and like it's funny to other people like but I learned to embrace the word fat. Everybody has fat in their bodies. You need it to live. You need it to succeed. You got muscle. You got water. You got bones. You got melanin. Some of y'all, you got fat. And I embrace my fat. I think it makes me beautiful. So, fuck you. (laughs) Because I've heard some nightmare stories. Even when I do interviews like this, uh, I've heard some nightmare stories when people think about the past and uh, teasing and bullying and stuff like that. Um, So, it got to a tough point, but it never got too much to bear, I guess. No, nobody ever jumped me for being a nerd. I was a nerd, though. Like, I wasn't, like... People don't, like, jump black nerds. Mm. Like, you jump, like, the little... You jump white nerds. Like, I hear that shit all the time. Shout out to Keenan or whatever his name was. But, like, (laughs) I... I was a black girl, and I was a nerd, and I was in band. Like, I didn't bring out the aggression in anybody. Mm. I just kind of lived my life, but I definitely probably got teased more than I even realized because I would zone out. I would like be reading a book and walking in the hallways in eighth grade, like looking in a book. It was very embarrassing now that I think about it, but I was just like, I was <laughs> reading Lord of the Rings and like walking through the hallways, like not looking at anybody. So they probably caught me all types of shit. I just didn't really pay attention. <laughs> it's true. She's laughing because it's true. This is the only person who would know that this is who could fact check me. <laughs> now, these days, teasing and bullying is at an all time high. Yes. And especially when you add the internet component to it, you got cyber bullying. So if it's yeah. not physical or verbal bullying, now it's cyber bullying. Yes. Um, and somebody watching this could be going through a multitude of feelings and cir- circumstances could be different for anybody and everybody. But somebody watching this, they're having a tough time right yeah. now, right? And you mentioned from fifth grade to high school. Is that what you said? I couldn't remember. Yeah. So, so let's say somebody's watching this. They're from fifth, the fifth grade to high school, 12th grade. They're having a tough time. They're having a hard time. What's the general advice there? What would you tell a person watching this? I would say that... When I was growing up, I used to wake up and wish I was somebody else. I would pray that I could be somebody else. But now, I am so grateful to be myself. I'm so proud of who I am and I wouldn't trade my life and my identity for anything in the world. And I I really just urge you to embrace yourself. These people may not understand you, but the whole world will embrace you one day when you embrace yourself. High school is not the world. High school is a microcosm of this many people who don't got shit to do with your future. So fuck them niggas, live your life, and move forward. Life is about moving forward. And if I stayed in middle school right now, if my whole life was middle school, I don't think I would fucking make it. (laughs) Cause middle school was not the coolest place for me personally. I wasn't popular ever. And that's fine, because that's life. But life isn't about school. Life isn't about adolescence. Life is about adulthood. And once you get there, you can make your own rules and live your own life. So just make it. I really urge you to make it. There's a lot of people who haven't made it, and there's a lot of people who won't make it. But if you're watching this and you have it in you, just keep fighting, because this shit is crazy. 
He's coughing. That's a cough. That did you? Cough. Did you? <laughs> did you? Did you have like? Did your parents help you with stuff like this? Get through this? Is this something you had friends help you? Whatever circle group of friends you did have. Um. <clears throat> something you self helped uh, on your own. No, I was very alone with my. I was very alone with my weird, my weirdness. Like, um, my parents didn't really, they worked a lot and they didn't, they weren't really around for when I was like, mom, I'm dealing with some problems today. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like an after school special where I could talk to my mom about my gym clothes disappearing, like being too hairy for gym class and like learning mm -hmm. how to shave, like all of these weird things. Like I didn't have my mom or my dad for that. I will say that like, I, the internet helped me, like I got to like go on different websites that taught me things. I read books about growing up. Growing up is hard, man. Growing up is not motherfucking easy, especially for women. I feel like women, there is no manual that can teach you how to uh, successfully transition from a girl who doesn't have periods, doesn't have body hair, doesn't have tits and all this shit to like a woman who is in charge of her sexuality. I feel like society doesn't give us that opportunity to successfully transition. I feel like there's some secret society of men that rear up young boys to just be these like ho ass niggas. <laughs> there's like a secret society that teaches young boys to just be these men that they are today, but women don't get that opportunity. We go out there and we're like, oh shit, you can get pregnant. Oh shit, I'm on my period. Oh shit, I'm hairy. And like, I feel like the internet has saved a lot of women from just being lost in that. And um, the internet saved me, books saved me. And unfortunately, that's just how it is. But we gonna change that. Women gonna have something. We need women to like grab young girls and be like, oh, I see you. I see your tits are getting a little big. Let me show you how to shop at Victoria's Secret Sport. Like the little dude, the dudes will be like, oh, you like her? Go get her. Go get her and just go get another one after her. These little boys be getting all types of tips to beat these fucking ballers and fucking players. Girls don't get that tip, but we bought to be the motherfucking ones that teach these little girls how to be players and ballers. Y'all better watch out. I'm going to see a little girl. She's going to be on the street like, what's good? I'm going to be like, come here. Come here, girl. What are you doing today? You want to you wanna go to Papa Do's? Let me teach you how to be a motherfucking pimp. Cause that's what we fucking need. <laughs> Let me show you how to shave that leg just right, sport. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have that, but you know, the future is the future is now and we're all a part of that, so